Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. But you're in store for a great seminar here. How many have not heard Trevin before? You've not heard Trevin Oh, speak. you guys are in for it. Right. Buckle up. Have you ever seen Robin Williams, late Robin Williams, do something? Okay. Robin um, Williams, Sophus, okay? <laughs> now, you're in for a great seminar. Trevin does a great job, so Trevin, all yours. Thank you, Scott. First thing I always start off with is, who's a bow hunter? Raise your hand. Who bow hunts in Colorado? Raise your hand. Who thinks it's important that we maintain the heritage and the tradition of bow hunting for the next generation? Raise your hand. All right? Who's a member of the Colorado Bow Hunters Association? Okay, we got two. My question to you three. We got my question to you is why not? Shame on you. Scott kind of stole a little bit of my thunder. Here's why it's so important. Did you guys realize we just fought a battle that you might not even know about? But the but the the Division of Wildlife, CPW, and the the board, the wildlife board, the chair, the, the chair that makes the decisions of what we get to do with bow hunting and hunting in Colorado, there was a tragic accident in South uh, Southwest Colorado where as you guys, if you're bow hunters, you know there's a muzzleloader season in the middle of elk season. A gentleman from Pennsylvania shot a, a bow hunter. He was a muzzleloader hunter, and he shot a bow hunter during muzzleloader season because they, they coincide. Who was a bow hunter? What's the first rule you learn in, in any type of hunter safety? Know your target and beyond, right? Same goes true for bow hunting. Know your target and beyond. He saw a movement, he shot, he killed this poor bow hunter from Texas. So the response was, the bow hunters need to wear blaze orange. That's like saying, if a bicyclist gets hit by the car on a street, then the bicyclist needs to go back to training or needs to, you know, needs to change something rather than the person driving the car, all right? Well, in three days we had short notice and we were told this is going to get shoved through. Bow hunters are going to wear blaze orange during bow hunting season from now on. We got a survey out to 11,000 people who responded in three days. We took all that data, we, we presented it to the board, we presented it to CPW, and guess what? They voted 11 to 0 to keep it so we get to bow hunt. Okay. It, it, it might not seem like much, but if, if, as you know, sometimes in situations when, when a legislative or a government agency takes something, it's very hard to get that back. So we got to be careful that we maintain our rights or our privileges, I should say. Um, I'm not a huge political guy, but when it comes to bow hunting, it's kind of near and dear to my heart. So I'm going to talk about something that I'm passionate about today. Who likes mule deer hunting? And, and come get over here. You like mule deer hunting? Get over here. If you like mule deer hunting, with a bow in your hand, it takes it to a next level. Okay? Let me just say one thing. I'm not, I'm not a smart man. Everything I've learned, somebody else taught me, and maybe I adapted it for my style, but I want to share with you some tricks and some tips that had really helped me become more successful spotting and stalking mule deer, okay? How can, and I get this question all the time, I produce Outback Outdoors, we were on the Sportsman Channel for many years, we were on Amazon Prime, now we're strictly on YouTube because most of the hunting shows are getting kicked off of Amazon. I don't know if you knew that. It's just not, I guess, the direction they want to go. That's fine. YouTube's free anyway, right? I don't mind. We log on, Outback Outdoors, you can watch all our stuff. It's free. But I get this question a lot. How, how can I notch more tags? How can I be more successful? That's the bottom line. Well, I'm going to show you. Now, I'm going to show you a clip to start out with. And I'm going to kind of narrate, but I'll shut up a little bit because I want you to enjoy it. But this is a clip of how we want it to work. This is my good buddy Dave Bronio. 
and we're in the sand hills of Nebraska. It's a lot like eastern Colorado. Broken country, some ag. Now you can see there's two bucks here. We're moving in, we have a good wind, because when you're hunting mule deer, they have a great sense of smell, but their ears are huge. So with a wind like this, I don't like to shoot long distances at that. I like to be up uh, seven yards. I can make it, I can make that shot in that wind at seven yards. So Dave gets up there, he's actually nine yards. So this is a little bit of a long shot. That buck, as you can see, is basically asleep. The idea is to get in that zone, pick your spot, and that is that. Now that's the culmination. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. God bless. No, but right? That's what we want. That's how we want it to end. Right? So, the idea is how do we go from here to there? Okay? Now, understand when I do seminars, hands go up, I want to stop. If you have a question, you stop me. Let's talk about it. That's the way you're going to learn. Okay? First things, we got to set our expectations. Okay? If I'm hunting an area, and it produces that high-end 160 to 165 class buck, and I'm holding out for 180, I'm going to be holding out for a while. Right? So we have to set our expectations. Do your homework. Talk to some people that have drawn that, or as you're choosing where you're going to apply for, do your homework. The area and the size of the bucks you're going to be targeting is going to be dictated by your expectations, by what that area is going to produce. Be realistic, be honest with yourself, and set your expectations early. I am a horrible trophy hunter. I'm an equal opportunity bow hunter, man. If I can, I'm, I, a lot of people say I'm hunting the opportunity more than I am the size of the animal. That's me. If you want to hold out, hey, God bless you, I'm just going to kill a whole lot more deer than you, but that's, that's okay. That's okay, it's good. That's what I want. Okay? I want, I'd love to kill a 100, 200 class buck, but the problem is I keep shooting in the 160s, 170s. Okay? I do like age. I do like to have a buck be at least four years old. Okay? That's when they're starting to get into their prime, four or five, white tail especially. Okay? But we're talking about mule deer hunting. Set your expectations. Okay. So here you got a nice little buck, both of these, right? Here you got a nice, uh oh. Trevin stumbled into a whopper. Hey, if you, you know what I mean, even a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then, right? Opportunity. If you're looking for this type of a buck, then you better be hunting late August, early September, right? If you want a fuzzy horn, man, uh, you know, velvet. So we're going to set our expectations early. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below, and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.